to get an ad realistic background to any picture first we need our original picture which we are going to turn into an ai picture to get our final picture i've been trying this technique behind the scene for a while and it's time to finally share it with you let's start with getting the background and i'll show you how you can apply it to your own image to get the background once we open our original picture inside of photoshop remember earlier i said we need our original image all right so i want to duplicate my background layer by pressing on command j or Control j if you're using a windows after that i'm just going to remove this distraction first so i pick my remove tool once i pick my remove tool i'm just going to remove this distraction right here and click ok and photoshop will automatically remove that distraction for me now after that i'm just going to crop this image 4 by 5 because i want to post it on instagram so i'll come to my crop tool just come to ratio make sure 4 by 5 is selected and just crop the image the way i want it so that this works for me i'll come to my seal make sure content aware is selected and i'll just click on ok right here and photoshop is just going to do its thing now what we want to do we want to use this our raw image which is our original image as a reference picture so that we can get the lighting right also so that we can get the pose right to make it look more realistic you are going to see what i'm going to do in a little bit but now after i finish copying this image i'm just going to save it as a jpeg all right so i'm going to come to my file click on export and click for save for web legacy now these are my settings you can just pause it and just look at my settings these are how i export my picture or how i save my pictures inside of photoshop now i'm just going to click on save you just look for where i want to save this image all right so i'm going to save it under my documents like this edited image i'm going to create a new folder so i want to create a um, video video folder you just click on create then just save the pictures inside that folder right there all right now if i just come to my finder come to my documents come to my edited image and just come to this video file right here you are going to see the jpeg which we save right here so this is the jpeg image of our original image all right so once we have that what i want to do i'll come to my google chrome or you can use any browser you just come to this website firefly.adobe.com you just hit ok so what we want to do with this website we want to generate a background but we are going to be using our original image as a reference so that the background is going to be accurate and fit our image all right so i'm going to come to this box right here and just type in what you want now for the background i generated for this image the prompt i used was background with black rocks with arc so i'm going to write it background and i'm just going to click generate right here now let's just wait for it to load so once that's finished loading you can see we have nice background but this is not actually what i'm going for so what I'm going to do, under this place that says square, I'm going to change it to portrait. And under this composition, under this reference, I'm going to upload our original image. So I'll click on upload image right here and just look for that our original image. So I'll come to my edited image, I'll come to a video and just click on this JPEG right here, which is our original image, remember? So I'm going to click on open, click on continue. So I've uploaded that image right there as the reference all right so you can see the image right here now what i'm going to do i'm going to scroll all the way down that says style i'm still going to upload our original image as a reference under this style as well so i click on upload image upload that same image all right now from here i'm going to scroll all the way down and make sure hyper realistic is selected all right now under the lighting i'm going to choose to do light because it's a studio image now under the camera angle since i shot this image with 85 mm 1.8 i'm going to click on this camera angle and just select shallow depth of field all right now from here i'm just going to click on generate remember we still have our prompt which is background with black rocks with arc so i'm going to click on generate right now all right as you can see it has generated similar image to our original image so this is the first variation the second variation i think i like this one the second variation also the third variation and the last variation i like this one more so i'm going to download this one right here all right now you can click on generate again to generate even more if you don't actually like the one it give you so what you can do if you don't like this first set you can click on generate again and it's going to load another set for you so for the one i did these are some of the results i actually got let me just show you 
so i'll come to my download this is the one i actually used this is the first one the second one the third one the fourth one but this was the one i used for my own image now after i finished generating that image i'm just going to come back to my photoshop once i open photoshop i'm going to click and drag the ai image which is generated inside adobe firefly to photoshop so since this is the one i want to use i'm just going to click and just drag it inside of photoshop like this and just open it in a new tab like that so right now we have our ai generated image inside of photoshop and this is our original image right here let me just put them side by side so you can see the similarities between both image so this one right here on the left is our original image why this one right here on the right is the ai generated image so you can see the similarities all right so let me just take it back so i'll come back to my ai generated image for me what i'm going to do i'm just going to remove the subjects from this generated image so i'll pick my remove tool once i pick my remove tool i'll make a rough selection around the subjects layer of our generated image all right so just like this okay and if you don't have this remove tool you can use the content aware all right so once i do that i'm going to click on ok right here and photoshop will automatically remove the subjects from this uh, ai generated background all right as you can see the subject is no longer on the background but it's looking kind of rough now to fix that i'm going to press or command j or ctrl j if you're using your windows and just pick a mixer brush tool with our mixer brush tool i'm just going to blur it a little bit so, so all this place is looking uneven i'm just going to use the mixer brush tool to try and just blur it out and just make everything look even so you don't really have to be precise for this part right here because our subject is actually going to cover it so just do it a little bit all right so i think like this works for me all right so like this works for me what i want to do next i want to add this background to our image all right so i'll come to my image now the first thing i'm going to do i'm going to cut out my subjects from the background so with this layer selected all right i want to make a selection of my subject to do that i want to pick on any selection tool so i think this quick selection works for me once i pick my quick selection tool i want to click on this drop down icon right here once i click on this drop down icon for a more accurate selection i'm going to click on cloud right here so that i can get a more detailed selection from here i'm going to click on select subject and photoshop will automatically select the subject for us as you can see so if i just zoom in you can see the selection is pretty accurate but you can actually refine it if you want to refine it and i'll show you how to do that all right so once my subject is selected since i want to cut out my subject from the background i'm going to invert the selection and make sure my background is selected so to invert your selection just press or command shift i or ctrl shift i as you can see we've inverted the selection now after inverting the selection just press or ctrl j or command j to remove the subjects from the background so if i just hide my subject layer so i'm going to name this layer subject so you can understand better subject and name this one background if i turn off all my subject layer you can see we have only the background so i'm going to turn my subject layer on and bring back my subject now instead of removing my subject from the background i want to hide it so to do that with my subject layer selected instead of making the selection again what i can do i can just press a command or control and click on my background layer to bring back the selection and just invert it so that only my subjects will be selected now i'm going to invert it by pressing on command shift i now my subject is selected again now with my subject selected i'm going to add a layer mask to hide it so i'm going to click on the layer mask right here so i've added a layer mask so what i'm going to do from here i'm going to come to my background layer and just drag it below my subject layer all right now we are almost there so what i'm going to do next just come to our background which we generated now to so come to the background we generated just come to your layer with this layer once selected just press or command c or ctrl c to copy it come back to your main image and just press or ctrl v to paste so right now you can see let me just rename this layer generated background g background so right now you can see our generated background is above our service layer but we want it behind our subject layer meaning we want to be at the back of our subject layer so i'm going to click and drag it and just put it below 
our subject layer now it's behind our subject layer so from here what i'm going to do i'm just going to resize it i press no command t or control t to bring me to our form tool and just resize it like this now it's going to look really accurate because our original image was in reference so you can see how good it's looking all right so from here i'm just going to click on okay as you can see it's looking good already because our original image was the reference image now you can choose to stop here if you want but you can take it a step further now like i said earlier if your selection is not accurate to make it even more accurate come to this layer mask of your subject double click on it and open your layer and mask so if i just zoom in right now if i want to add this part to the selection what i can do with my color away i want to scroll all the way down so once i scroll all the way down i'll make sure this decontaminate color is selected right and i just take down the amount to about 80 percent from here i'm going to pick on this two right here which is this refine edge tool once i select it i'm not going to paint around the edge of my subjects to make the selection look even more accurate all right so just take a look at this part right here you can see it's looking much better right now so you can just do it around the edges that's not looking good so you can see this part right here they are not looking good so i'm just going to paint on it like this just to find that edge to make it look even more better all right you can see it's looking more better so you can take your time to do this for the whole of your image but it's not really visible like this so i think it's okay for me like this so from here just make sure add space to a new layer with layer mask and click on ok so you can see we have a new layer with layer mask and this one right here i'm just going to delete it because i don't need it anymore all right so to make the background look even more realistic i'm going to add noise so i come to my action and just click on noise right here and if i zoom in you can see we have the digital noise on the background it's looking more realistic and you can choose to take down the opacity even more now I'm not going to stop here. I'm still going to make it look realistic even more. Now to do that, I'm just going to blur it a little. So with my generated background selected, which is this G background, I come to my filter and convert for smart filter. Now the reason why I convert for smart filter, if I blur it and I want to change the blur amount or the blur radius, I can actually go back to change it. That's why I convert it for smart filter. Now next thing I'm going to do with this generated background to selected, I come to my filter, I come to my blur gallery. And i'll click on till shift right here now the way till shift work is i want the blur to come from the down up let me just show you what i mean so if i take this point down like this all right and i move this part up like this if i just blur it right now let me zoom in a little bit so you can see all right so if i just blur it right now you can see the blur is affecting from this place upward it's not affecting for this place downward if i move this place up you can see it's going to take the blur from there and just make the blur transition look smooth like that so you can choose to do that if you want but like this works for me i'm just going to reduce the blur a little bit because i feel it's too much so 23 works for me for me i'm going to click on okay all right so take a look at the before and after the before and the after the before and the after so much better the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to make the background and the subject sync like just make it harmonize and to do that i'm not going to color grade it inside of camera Raw. now to open this image inside of camera Raw, i'm going to create a stamp visible layer and just merge everything i did on the layer so i want to press a command option shift e or control shift alternate e to create a stamp visible layer so everything i did right now it's on this new layer right here so if i turn off all the layers below it's not going to even affect the layer at all because we've created a stamp visible layer as you can see all right so with this stamp visible layer selected i'm going to cut my filter and convert it to a smart filter remember the reason why i convert a smart filter if i make any adjustment i can actually go back and change any adjustment i want to change because it's a smart filter all right so i'll come back to filter again click on camera filter right here and once my camera open i'm just going to color grade both the subject and the barrier together to just make the image look uniform so I already have a preset that is to color grade this image. So I come to my preset right here. Once I come to my preset, I'm going to click on this mid black and orange like this and just take down the amount a little bit because I feel it's looking too much. So let's say 50 works for me. So I like 50%. I'm going to come back to my adjustment. For me, I can choose to make more adjustments. So I think I'm going to take the blacks inside even more. All right. Maybe take down the highlights even more. Now I feel the fade is looking too much. So I'm going to scroll the way down and just come to my um 
curves and just take down this fade a little bit because if i take this part up it's just going to face the image even more but i'm going to take it down a little bit just to reduce the fade as you can see all right so let this work for me next thing i'm going to do i'm going to scroll all the way down and just come to my calibration under my calibration i cut my blue primary and just move the saturation of the blue primary up a little bit to about 15 percent so that this works for me so let's see the before and after for camera rock see the before and the after the before and the after you can see it's looking uniform and sweet now this time i'm going to do i'm going to come to my masking click on this linear gradient right here and just darken this part of the image just a little bit so once i make mask for that place i'm going to come to my light under exposure i'm going to take the exposure down a little bit like this and just hit okay now let's see before camera and after camera so this is the before and after looking even more better you can stop here if you want but i'm going to take it a step further so i'm going to come to my adjustments click on levels adjustments and just add a little of contrast so i come to my shadow parts once i come to my shadow part i move the shadow parts inside a little bit come to the highlights move it inside a little bit like this also another thing i'm going to do i'm going to add noise to the image remember we added noise to the background but we did not add noise to the subject so right now i want to add noise to the subject so it's going to look uniform all right so i'm going to come to my action again and just click on noise right here so if i zoom in you can see it's looking good but it's looking too much so what i would do for me i'm going to take down the opacity of the noise a little bit to about 30 percent so 30 works for me or you can use 40 if you want but 30 works for me now the final thing i'm going to do i'll come back to my adjustment again click on cause adjustment now there's an hidden feature inside of course i don't know if you know about it so once you open your course just hold alternate or option and just click on this auto right here and just going to open this new auto color correction options for you so from here you have four options to choose from you have the enhanced monochrome contrast you can see what's happened to the image you have the enhanced per channel contrast you can see what's happened to the image you have fine dark and light colors you can see also you have enhanced brightness and contrast as you can see now before you make any selection just make sure this snap to neutral mid-tones is selected now if i select this first one right here i'm going to get this option so i want to check snap to neutral mid-tones right here once i check it from here now i can choose to select anyone i actually want all right so let's see so actually looks good let's try this one this one is not good let's try this one i think i like this fine dark and light colors better so this one works for me i'm going to click on okay now from here let's see the before and the after see the before and the after the before and the after are looking so much better while i feel it's looking too much i'm going to take down the opacity a little bit just like this i think sell works for me so the before and the after so from here i want to group everything i did so we can see the before and the after all right so let's see see the before and the after the before and the after and remember before you start changing your background make sure you do the skill retouching of your image you can see right now i've not done the skill retouching for this image so make sure you do your skill retouching before actually changing the background of your image i hope this video was helpful and useful to you and if you want to learn how to retouch your image check out this video right here i'll see you guys in my next one stay creative